Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today is a video I have been noodling on for a minute and I got your stamp of approval on it on my Instagram stories today and that is second best of the best of 2021. Like the honorable mentions. There are a lot of comments on that video and that like I got in DMs and stuff where people were like, well, but I thought you really liked this one product and more than in previous years, I'm like, I do, but I feel like I need to explain to you why I think that it is great, but not perfect. A lot of times it's because it's better for someone else than it is for me. Sometimes it's just, I don't reach for it because I have a product I like better than it or something like that. And I think that that is almost maybe just as helpful as finding out what I think is like a perfect product because I am not the only person in the world <laughs> and everybody's needs are different. And so, especially if something didn't work for me for all the reasons that it's gonna work for you or you have it in your collection and you just need to know whether like you really need to buy the best of the best one or if like that one is just fine, <laughs> you know? And I wanna save you guys money and I wanna make sure that when you are making purchasing decisions, they are as informed as I can possibly provide. So I collected a bag, it's not as big as my best of the best. So this is just going to be kind of a culmination of honorable mentions of 2021. So best of the second best, Let's go ahead and jump in. Oh, this look, guys, had so many phases. <laughs> my hair was up in a bun and I just pulled it down at the very last second and it looks like this and I was like, okay, Hannah Louise Post and who? This eye look, I used some of my favorite things and then included some of my like newer things and it took this really cool toned turn and I still don't really know how I feel about it, but it definitely is dystopian cowgirl fortune teller. So uh, just, you know, working those muscles. That was not a hand motion that I want anyone to gif. Let's go ahead and grab my bag here. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is this, mainly because I stopped short of putting it on today because I wanted to show it to you guys in action one more time right after I sneeze. <laughs> All right, woo! Okay, this is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow in 001 Pink. I get a lot of use out of this. I still don't know whether it's Carmine or something else, but it does do the thing where it leaves little red dots on my face. I don't know where I got it in my head that it's Carmine that does that, but I do remember when Kosas turned all of their powder formulas, actually all of their blush formulas, vegan, their blush formula stopped doing that. So it is something. <laughs> it is something that isn't a vegan ingredient, but I assumed it was Carmine because it's red and beetles, the red beetles, that's what Carmine is, like ground up beetles. Either way, <laughs> I wanted to show this to you guys in action because I felt like my cheeks needed a little bit of awakening and also a little bit more cool tone. And someone told me that they have this, it was in their collection and they're like, I just don't really understand how to use it. It looks kind of wacky on me sometimes. The thing about this, besides the little red dots, that didn't make it into my like tippy top favorites is because there is a learning curve to it. I don't think it is the easiest blush in the world for everybody to use. It kind of comes with an understanding of the fact that that's a very, very extreme color. It's a very extreme cool pink, fluorescent cool pink. So an understanding of the color wheel can be very valuable in making this work for you. Understanding your undertones and then understanding how to complement it with the other products on your skin. So for me, I'm looking at this going, okay, I know that crazy, crazy hot pink is not my shade, but I really like the kind of purple in there. So how am I going to maybe balance it out the a little bit of that like fluorescence i want to kind of muddy it a little bit right so i want to either balance it out with something that's like a a green bronzer like a green linen bronzer or something with just like a little bit of like mucky rosiness to it like almost like gray and that happens when you combine dissonant colors mud is not necessarily always a bad thing you want to use it to your advantage by combining colors that oppose each other on the color wheel so it's like christmas colors orange and blue which are gator colors which is always easy for me to remember because i'm a seminole that's not going to reach very many people but orange and blue are opposites and then yellow and purple are opposites I always remember that because you tone your hair with purple shampoo to get the brassiness out, usually. If you can get it to like a light yellow, you just use purple shampoo. So when you're talking about something like this, you look at kind of the outrageous color that ends up on your skin. Like you're like, whoa, that's too fill in the blank. And then think of the opposite of the color
color wheel, that's what's gonna tone it back down. So I love this. I truly love this, but it is not necessarily a beginner or universal blush shade. So that is why I personally love it. But for like $37, you know what I mean? I wanna build in as many caveats as possible before somebody thinks that this is gonna be some kind of miracle and spends Dior dollars on it and then is like, what have I done, you know? Okay, next, this is actually like the big, it's like what made me wanna film this video, it is the biggest question that I got. Everybody said, you know, you had such a fit over this, you use it a lot in your videos, why didn't it make it into your best of the best? And I did explain it in another video, but just in case you're curious, this is the Fenty, Be Fenty Beauty Body Sauce. I have it in the shade 01 Pearl Swirl, and it is so, so cool, like such a cool product. I remember, I thought this was before the eavesdrop was even on our radar, right? I thought that this was gonna be a tinted moisturizer when I first saw it, and then I went into Sephora and I swatched it and I was like, these shades are all wrong. What is she thinking? And I had no idea that the bottle was gonna be this big. I was just so confused when I saw it. And it turns out, and it had to be explained to me and demonstrated to me by Kate the Great when we did our collab, she was like, you need it. I needed it. It's so effective at what it is because it's basically a temporary body tan, you know, like not staining your skin, but just a body makeup. Man, what a great natural looking tan on my skin that is. Yeah, it's gonna come off, you know what I mean? Like, it's a body makeup. It's going to like come off on your clothes and stuff, but it does have a pretty darn good dry down. But the way that I like to use it is to mix it with my foundation because it feels like I'm adding this sun-kissed richness to my foundation. I have a lot of control over the amount that I put in with my foundation. And so my complexion can be healthier looking, essentially. The reason that I don't recommend it across the board is because it kind of is comedogenic a little bit. Like it kind of breaks me out if I use too much of it too many days in a row. And I just didn't want to recommend it alongside all of my favorite foundations and everything like that because I really have a ton of foundations that those have kind of risen to the top of. And this is a product that I just don't have anything to compare it to. So it's, I can't say it's like the best of this. I've used this and like maybe something similar from Vita Liberata in the past, but like, I think it's a really, really great idea that's not a completely perfect product because it does break me out. Like I can't use it every single day. That's all, you know? And so it's like, if you don't have sensitive skin and you find a shade in this that is just as knockout as I feel like this is on me or as the shade that Kate uses on her, then absolutely. But I do want anybody kind of approaching this to, be, before they spend their $48 on this, 45, 49, something like that, to understand that if you have sensitive skin, it might really irritate your skin and not be worth buying. All right, this is the only like foundation that is in my second best of the best, and it's the Tower 28 Sunny Days. I really love this, I do. It didn't make it into my favy faves because it's really hard to recommend combined SPF and foundation products. A lot of people were frustrated by this, mainly because of the name, literally only because of the name, the fact that they call it a tinted sunscreen, meaning that it's kind of a sunscreen first and it just happens to have a tint when I feel like it's the other way around. I feel like it is much more a complexion product first and happens to have a little bit of sunscreen in it. It is 12.6% non-nano zinc oxide and I mean, I think they did an amazing job with this. I mean, the execution on this formula and the shade range is so awesome. This is such an easy formula to wear, especially for something that does have sunscreen in it. I feel like sometimes it's easy to be misled, especially by me in a position of like, trying to influence you, that you might think that because this is called a tinted sunscreen that you don't need to wear a sunscreen with it. I just felt like, it was a little hard for me to be like, yes, this is an absolutely perfect product because I felt like there was just a lot of confusion around it, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous, totally beautiful for summertime, especially because it's just such a lightweight coverage, but also it still has coverage. Like it does look like a skin tint, like it has actual blurring and coverage. And again, the price is right 
and the shade range is pretty awesome. Like it got some of the best kind of across the board shade range release general reviews that I've seen in a long time. The other thing, and this is more of a case of just getting pushed out by other things because I love all of my concealers so much. And this one's just not different enough necessarily for me to be like, yes, and you need this because it is, you know, it just didn't have enough kind of commitment one way or the other for me to say it's better than the Kosas or it's better than the Thrive. This is the Tarte Hydro Sealer. I have it in the shade 8S Porcelain Sand and I love it. It is also super hydrating. I happen to have it in a pretty fair shade so I use it for more for like brightening purposes. It's probably also why I don't share it that often is because I don't feel like pulling the Jackie Ina thing if I can help it. Where she, I mean granted, deep skin you tend to have to use more shades of concealer because you want to kind of bridge the brightness with the depth and also build in a lot more uh, undertone and temperature. And so what she's doing makes sense. But when I'm recommending products and I know that people are not on like this infinite budget, I don't wanna be like, yeah, I use four concealers every single day kind of thing. I would rather just say, yes, you can use this one and like build it and don't buy one just specifically for brightening. So that's that's sort of my mentality, but like, do I love this? Absolutely. Would I like travel with it? Absolutely. It's so gorgeous. And I wanna say it has a pretty big shade range too. And you can get minis, which is great. I don't, I'm not a big fan of minis when you already have a full size, you know, it's like a travel size or something, but like to try something and not be wasteful. So yeah, it does come in minis if you want to try them or if you wanna buy multiple shades. Couple blushes here, one, the Maybelline Cheek Heat, oh my gosh, hidden gem. Hidden gem at the drugstore. I have come so close to buying all of these. The only reason I haven't bought all of them is just because I'm like, okay, I got enough blushes and I feel like I have communicated how I feel about these. But just for my own personal use, this is just one of the most gorgeous, almost cooling, beautiful serum-based blush creams. And it has the tiniest, subtlest, amount of minerality, that gorgeous shift on the skin. It just makes the cheeks look so healthy. Oh, it's gorgeous. And I love that even though it's called cheek heat, which would lead you to believe that they're all gonna be in these like fiery warm tones, there's actually a pretty cool spectrum of shades in this that go like to lavender and stuff. So yeah, man, hidden gem at the drugstore is the cheek heat. I need to pull this out more. It just was something that kind of it got set aside and again, eclipsed by other things, but it's so good and it's like under $10. And the other ones are the LYS blushes. I think that this was just a case of me having shades that I felt like I didn't reach for as often because they are just very, one and done wearable and I tend to kind of go for watercolor, but I did go ahead and use this today and I love it. So I used self love today. That's definitely the one that I reach for more. I feel like empower is a little bit red for me instead of being like berry, it's a little bit too on the red side, but such an unbelievably gorgeous formula. I would compare this formula to like a drier version of the melt blush lights. So it's like there's the melt cream blush lights, they have kind of that dry oil thing. And then there's like these MAC glow play blushes, right, that are actually kind of like mostly a powder, but you kind of put them on as a cream. They're kind of like the bounce and blur for bare minerals, but this isn't a clean formula. I don't know whether that means that it has silicones in it or not, but the brand LYS is a black owned, clean formula brand at Sephora and these are $16 which is phenom nom nom. I really, really enjoyed these. Again, I just, I guess I don't reach for them that often just because I feel like I could have bought better shades for me, but the formula is exquisite and very good for people who still wanna have like cream cheek look, a cream cheek look, <laughs> but uh, also have like oilier skin. All right, all I have left are eye products here. So I didn't fail to mention these, it's just that they're sold out all the time. And so I get frustrated recommending them and so I kind of put them back in a drawer. But I do wanna talk about them because I feel like Wayne Goss nailed it in 2021. This is the Wayne Goss Tourmaline Palette and the Pearl Palette. And they are, I would say, kind of cut from the same cloth, right? They're two sides of the same coin. This one being very much like a 
white girl princessy bridal kind of thing and this being just this really cool like old Hollywood uh, like all of these go on more sheerly than they look like they're going to they're not as intense and he does like his first palette is so intensely and richly pigmented that I actually had trouble using it the imperial topaz I feel like these are more like white girl friendly you know but I have to just say that I love his formula. Like, I just want to vouch for his formula. Like, this one, you can already see, like, there's indentations in these. I think you guys got sick of me talking about the Pearl palette in the months that followed its release because I really did just only reach for it for such a long time that I kind of put it away out of exhaustion. I was like, I'm sure, it's kind of like the Divine Rose palette from, um, from Pat McGrath. It was like, once I got it, it just like wouldn't shut up about it. And this one I feel like was the biggest curveball for me because I really, I ordered it on a fluke. I was like, I kind of just want to have this to have it and to be able to review it, but I'm prepared for the fact that it's not going to work for me. And it totally worked for me. These shades that you think are going to be this like really, really intense burgundy, they actually have a really great kind of level of pigment where I feel like you can build them up and get some really good non-ashy saturation out of them, but they have enough shift, not necessarily glitter, but shift to them that you can get them really, really sheer and they do kind of watercolor. Even this gold right here, this is not the celestial gold. This gold, it's got this really gorgeous bronziness to it and it also doesn't have a ton, ton, ton of shift to it. It's not glittery. And so you can control the way that the light hits your eyes and still use most of the shades without feeling like it's gonna, you know, accentuate a bunch of texture. And then the glitter that's in here, his celestial, he puts a celestial in every single one. Look at it, it's translucent. It is only the glitter, it is not a color, whereas the one in the pearl palette actually has, this is always the hard one to open, actually has like a fair bit of actual pigment behind it. It's pink, you know? Do you see what I mean now? Does that comparison help? So that's the celestial from the pearl palette, and then this one is from the tourmaline palette, and it's just the softest, prettiest, like no pigment, scattered light kind of thing. And I think that was such an excellent choice. Just such an excellent choice for a palette that because of the richness of the colors, the actual color story could have been quite overwhelming, but that topper is a true topper. And so it doesn't go full glam, it goes old Hollywood glam. I feel like that nuance was executed really well on the Tourmaline palette. So yeah, those were amazing. I used the crap out of them this year. It just, they kind of went on the back burner because he, you know, he only does these kind of limited releases. Like I'm so grateful that Lisa Eldridge has started putting out so much more stock every time she releases something because then I feel comfortable recommending it for longer. There's something really obnoxious about I'm always raving about a product and not really realizing until it's too late that it's just not coming back or it's coming back, you know, sometime in the uh, unpredictable future. Like, I don't like doing that to people. The only reason that I didn't talk about this is because this formula did not come out this year, just these shades. So this is the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster. And I, I've said, oh God, I feel like I've said these same words so many times, but I did not enjoy the initial release. I felt like the shifts were strange. They were hard to work with. It was like they kind of shifted too many standard deviations away from the base color. So like blonde went from icy white to like hot orange gold. And I was like, that's not what I thought it was going to do. It wasn't my expectation. Mink was like a little bit too blue on the shift. This is tea rose. I saw State of Kate use this and she didn't like it. And that's kind of the beauty of it, right? Is when you see somebody describe something in a lot of detail, you can say, okay, even though it didn't work for you, all of those are the reasons that it's going to work perfectly for me. Like this was the exact color that I was looking for. I love honey too. It's just a really beautiful bronze gold, but I feel like this one is far more unique. I don't have a color like this in my collection. T-Rose is just a freaking home run for the people who have a little bit of yellow undertone. And so it's going to counterbalance the purple in it and it's going to just pull a really, really pretty muddy taupe. I do have the Lisa Eldridge uh, glitter shadow in like the lighter purple on top. So that is why this appears so purple. But when I put this on, I mean, it really pulls basically like a warm brown on me because the purple works against my skin tone. And I also get that really lovely lovely gold reflection, the, the little tiny micro glitter in there. I love this formula because you get sheen, you get scattered light, and you get actual like richness of pigment. 
And so it's an all, it is the, a true one and done eyeshadow for me, for someone who likes impact. You know, I, if I'm gonna only wear one eyeshadow, it has to do several things. I can't just have a flat shadow or just a glitter or whatever. It really needs to have like, three shadows in one and that's what I feel like this one did and they're all the right color for me so yeah I really feel like she has been honing in on more practical iterations of her shades because her formulas were always really well executed it excites me to see what else she does all right I have two more eyeshadows I mean you know, how did I get away with not saying anything about this? When I tried Illamasqua, it was something that was so like off the beaten path for me because I knew I recognized the brand, but I couldn't remember why or from how long ago or whatever. And to me, it just kind of seemed almost like an indie brand at the time. Turns out they've been around for ages and ages and ages. And they used to be at Sephora. They're just not anymore. It's a UK based company. And I happened to order this shade in their chrome paints. I think that's what they're called. Iconic Chrome Pigment Paint. This is the shade Alluring. Is it the most unique shade in the world? Absolutely not. It is very similar to Lisa Eldridge's Angelica. It is very similar to the L'Oreal Infallible in Amber Rush, but this formula really knocked my socks off because it is like a mirror polish on the skin. It is so beautiful. And the other thing that kind of kept me from recommending these is that the shades perform differently shade to shade. I would recommend this shade. I'm not sure I would recommend the other ones. Some of them are sheerer. Some of them don't have the kind of mirror finish. They're not as consistent. And some of the colors are just bonkers. They're just real weird. Like they shift in a very unnatural way. And there's nothing wrong with shifting in, you know, different ways and stuff like that. It would be different though, if they all gave you the same kind of consistent chrome finish. I just found that Alluring was the one that gave me like the magical butterflies. And finally, I don't know, man, I guess we're ending on sort of a boring note, but like, I cannot stop reaching for this, but it's, I think I just don't talk about it because it seems kind of boring. It is the Revlon Colorstay Cream Eyeshadow in Chocolate. I'm wearing it right now, and I can't really even like, articulate what makes it so special other than that ain't chocolate, okay? That is like a cool, taupey, purpley brown, and it is the ultimate crease shade. I'm wearing it right now. It is so good at working on every finish. So you can apply it on top of powder. You can apply it on top of cream. You can apply it on top of something that's dried down. It works on top of texture. And I like to apply it with kind of like I have this brush from Persona. These very densely packed brushes. So not necessarily a cream eyeshadow brush, but like, you know, it's almost like a a powder cream eyeshadow brush. It gives you almost like this crayon shape that you can just work into the crease like that. And it picks up a lot of product, but it spreads it really evenly. And I have just found that like this color, I think that that's the other reason that I didn't recommend it is just that I'm, I'm just sitting here raving about the nuance of a color. Not so much like, oh my God, go out and buy it in every shade. It's like this specific shade of this specific formula is better than a MAC paint pot. But I think that those are my fabie faves. I also wanted to briefly mention BK. I've been getting a lot of messages from people that are like, hey, what BK brush do you use for this? What BK brush do you use for that? That kind of thing. So I thought that I would just run through them really quickly. There is always a 10% off code to BK underneath my videos. And it is the lovely Lisa J Makeup who basically invented this line. And they are ultra lovely, luxurious, gorgeous makeup brushes that have improved my makeup game and that's why I use them so much. This is the 101. This is what I use for cream blush. It's great. It's densely packed. It's angled. It does a phenomenal job. It's also pretty good for dispersing like cream contour and stuff. It's not too big for that. I have the one that took a ride all around my house because of my son. This is the one he kept sticking in his ear that I found Cheerios in. This is the 106 very good for targeted placement of a contour. That's what I use this for. I also have the 104 and the 102, blush and bronzer, and interchangeably, depending on the size of the area you wanna apply them to. These are the perfect uh, pointed dome shape with a little bit of kind of a duo fiber moment happening. They're great. I have received comments where people are like, what brush was that? That looked fun. <laughs> I think that's great because they're fun to use. I think that makeup obviously should be fun, but I think that a lot of times we forget that our brushes can make or break that whole experience. 
And I love my Eco Tools brushes, I really do. But they love to discontinue their brushes, they really do. I'm loving that like these are mainstay core items and they're just, they're great investments. They really, really are. Perfect size for, for my blush, perfect size for just pounding on some bronzer. And as cream bronzer goes, if you're like me and a giant brush makes you feel powerful, the 105 might be for you. This is like the brush that you cram into the uh, Fenty cream bronzer and you just, hmm. And it kind of does a really good job of blending mainly because it covers so much of your face at one time. I think there's something to be said for using a really large brush in some cases, because if I tried to like blend my bronzer with this, for example, symmetry would be so difficult to achieve. It's kind of like trying to apply something with your fingers. There is so much more room for error because it's such a tiny, tiny tool and you're touching your face so much more. I also really like to use this with the, like the Makeup by Mario and stuff like that. It's just really good for getting a nice diffused line, I should say, but without losing the line, you know? Cause you don't want your contour like all the way like down to your neck or something. So anyway, and then there are just the eyeshadow brushes, right? I mean, I love my Wayne Goss brushes, but he loves to just discontinue them drives me absolutely up a wall. My O2 brush from Wayne Goss that I love so very, very much. I just don't think that you can get it. You know, it's just super aggravating. It's really these three brushes from BK that are my choice. This is the one that I use all the time and I have it in like the travel size too. It's like a slightly shorter handle. This is the 201. Uh -huh. It's just the perfect little domed guy to, you know, do all your business, all, all, all your everywhere business. Just really, really great for that. This guy, wow, what a great little brush. This is the 207 and it is just so good for getting like right there. And also if you're trying to get a really, really good like outer V situation, but you have that issue like I do where like this part of your eye likes to just stay bald for some reason. It just doesn't want eyeshadow on there. I guess it's cause like when you push the skin, it kind of always covers up that one spot. This little baby will get in there, okay? And then, uh, granted, I have to really have the patience to work with something this tiny, but I have never seen this tiny of a brush before for putting on eyeliner, earth signs. Like if you want a really, really precise line, you wanna be able to control every stroke, this is the 208. And she's so eensy weensy. Like, let me compare it to the eyeliner fine brush from Thrive, and then this is that 208. <laughs> from BK just for scale reference. In case you're like, that's pretty much the size I use. Are you sure? <laughs> because this is so tiny. It's just so freaking tiny. You can do anything with this little guy if you have the patience. But those are the main ones from BK that I use and how I use them. This is just a really good kind of FAQ, I feel like. A lot of things that I get messaged about. So yeah, guys, I hope this was fun and helpful for you. Honestly, it cleanses my brain a lot because I have wanted to talk about all this stuff, but like if I had included all of this in my favorites, can you imagine how long that video would have been? Nobody would have watched it and I wouldn't have been able to talk by the end of it. I was already hoarse by the end of the first one. So let me know if this is a video that you guys want each time. Like, is this kind of a standard iteration we need to include in the portfolio? And if so, that's awesome because it helps me kind of uh, organize my thoughts ahead of time. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I love you guys dead. <laughs> that was really annoying. Um, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Nice. Right.